Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 6, Episode 1. Oh my gosh, this episode does have some controversy. So let's get started. If you would please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe, that would be really helpful. This year, or this season, and from now on, I'll be showing each one of the entry participants along with the painting that they did in order to be accepted into the competition. Now, they have no time constraints on the entry that they do. They do submit two entries, so I don't know how the judges pick one, but I looked at the application and that's part of the process. So this is very interesting to me. I want to get an idea of who the field is, and it's a very varied field, and we want that because we don't want to see the same painting over and over and over again. Although later in this episode recap, you'll probably disagree with me <laughs> because once again, there are some real judging challenges that uh, baffle me, but that is part of accepting what this program is. It is inconsistent in terms of what they choose as being the winners. Um, and, and, you know, I, I struggle to accept that, but, but I do over and over and over again. So we have nine different participants and three models. So our first model up is an actor, a very young actor named Asa Butterfield. And they placed him in front of some very strong horizontal stripes, which is not going to play into the final outcome at all. If it had been me, I would have used that as a device, but more about that later. So four hours into the episode, uh, I mean, <laughs> to, the, to their time, not the episode, the artists turn their easels around and Asa gets his first look at the paintings, as do we, the completed paintings, and he's going to pick one of these to take home. Here's the first one up. It was interesting to watch the process. I watched with the sound off, which I like to do. And this person did paint probably about three or four of these. So that's what took up his entire time when it comes to the four uh, hours. Otherwise, I would wonder, what in the world did you do for four hours? I think this is a lovely piece. But I also think that this would be a lovely piece as an illustration, for example, in a magazine or on a graphic. I don't see how this becomes a portrait artist of the year caliber material, especially when you look at the expanse of what didn't get painted. All that torso wasn't handled in any way, and that's, that's this person's thing. He's a minimalist. Now here's the next one, and you know how I feel about this, which is you have an island, the entire head, surrounded by ocean. I call it an island surrounded by oceans painting. You need to anchor it in. You need to pick up your pastel, and just draw some lines that will indicate some shoulders. Otherwise, it's a disembodied head, and I always find that disturbing. When we come in closer, then I can let that disturbance fade into the distance and have a better idea of the quality of the work. This is so feathery and delicately done that up close, I mean, honestly, it looks like he has feathers, which is a little weird, almost I almost looked at it and I thought, oh, this painting's making me thirsty. <laughs> it just is dry, if you know what I mean. But that that's just how this person handles the medium that they use. Now this is the next one up, and here the stripes are in play. And I thought this was well done because they're using it as a design element. Using that horizontal, they played with it a little bit, but using the horizontal so that the head has something some negative space around it that that makes sense and adds to the painting. I do wish that there had been a, a larger value range overall. I want to go in with my brush and, for example, make parts of those glasses darker. I think I think he needed one more pass to get his darkest darks in there and we would have had a more successful painting. I'm not talking about details, I'm talking about value shapes. Well there, that's what I was talking about. When we pull away it shows up there. That's the adjustments I would have made. So I guess they were there and it just didn't show up. This is the one that Asa uh, picks to go home. And that's an honor just in itself, but won't have an effect on whether or not this artist wins the episode. So the next model up is Mickey Flanagan. And Mickey Flanagan is a comedian. And I could tell that just from the sound off because he was making everybody laugh. Now let's talk, take a look for a second about where they've placed him. He, 
oh, first the um, the easels get turned around. But what we saw was we saw um, him in pretty neutral clothes in front of a red background. I don't know why all, I shouldn't say all, two of the artists, not even two, <laughs> let me back up. I don't understand the color palette here. Now, I've thought about this a lot because at first I just thought, I just don't like this painting, but I've thought about it a lot. Really the only legitimate gripe to have with this painting is that the head is disproportionate to the body. It's, that part is wrong. It's, it's just mathematically wrong. But they got a likeness and they have the stance of how the sitter was sitting. Now, what I just personally find that I don't like is this is not the color palette I would ever gravitate toward. That uh, very um, cold pink and green, which even though it's being used as a mid-tone here, is, is cool. You know, when I'm talking about cool, you know, the cools tend to be the water sides of the color wheel. You, uh, green, blue, violet. And so there, there, that, that's, that's better because here we have some cool against some um, warm. So it works a little bit better. But, but the truth is when you look at your palette and you mix your colors, if you do not like the colors that you mix, that is, they are indeed the colors that are going to show up in your final piece. And, you know, just like if you put ingredients in a cake, if you put, if you don't like raisins, don't put it in your ingredients because it's going to show up. So I don't like the color palette. This one, of course, I love this one. It clearly shows that this person knows how to draw a face, that they know how to exercise the proportions correctly. They've used complementary colors of the red behind and the green shirt, which was a smart decision to make, and I think also took advantage of the negative space behind by leaving that white on the right side of the paper. That whole right side of the face appears to have more light on it and more warmth than the dark side of the face. But those shifts are so delicately done that it, I, I just think she did a beautiful job. There's a lot of color in that painting, but there are also a lot of beautifully mixed neutrals, and those neutrals are what are the glue that's holding the forms together really well. So she's a very experienced painter. Now the next one up used a metal panel and put oil paint on top of the metal panel, and the result of that is a lot of slippery paint, and that must be very difficult to manage, but it does give a a lot of written, richness of color that I haven't seen in a, in a canvas necessarily before. So on first glance, I really like this. I like, I sort of like the jewel tones. <laughs> it's funny that everyone decided to color swap out the shirt for green, I guess to play against the red in the back. And that, that's, that's just smart color wheel decisions. Now let's pull back and look at this from far away. Yeah, that looks, I, I really like this one, but, but the glare, is 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 hard for my eye to adjust to. Um, so now, as we know, Mickey will pick one of these to go home with him, and we get a chance to see uh, if if we agree or not. So let's see. Mickey picks which one? Oh, Mickey picks the one that was done on the metal, and she's thrilled. And it looks really good from this angle, I have to say. So nice job on that one. Now the next one up is Anjali Mohindra. And Anjali is a beautiful actress. And so we're going to get a chance to see what these next three painters do. I also love how um, she decided to wear something that emphasizes her, her long neck and that very elegant jaw that she has. That's just I just think that's one of the most beautiful places on a woman are that jaw into an elegant neck and, and down the collarbone. But, you know, that's just, I like forms. What can I say? And I find that fascinating. So now four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and, oh, this does not look promising to me. Oh, boy. All right. We've got to talk about these things. So we shall do it. Now, the first one up is done with pencil or very like charcoal, but I think they I think they said pencil. I went back in to check. Now the problem with this one, squint in your eyes and you will see absolutely no value differences at all. Everything is a mid-tone. 
Yes, it's a good drawing, but you do not have any kind of value range. You have some, you have some lights, and then you have some darker lights. <laughs> There's no darks. So what this person needs to do is pick up more than one pencil. You know, get one of those pencils that has um, a softer lead in it, so that you can start to exhibit a value range in what you do. And then we would have some darker tones. And this painting just needs it so badly. And when we pull back, you know what I sort of look at is I go, oh my gosh, it's disappeared. It's, it's, hello, hello, are you, are you there? Are you there? No. And this is not the artist's fault, but the artist needs to uh, experiment and get some other ability to make a value range there. This one is, um, it's a beautiful painting. I, I don't think it looks like her at all, but that's subjective. What I am not thrilled about with this painting is just the scratchy application of paint. Now, we've had painters that have drawn with paint before, and it's been an absolutely beautiful result because not only do they draw with the paintbrush, so you get to see that gestural stuff, but they're, they tend to add more and more layers, and so you get sort of the combination of drawing and painting. But what's happening here is a lot of drawing, and I'm not seeing a lot of painting. Even the background, I, I want, you know, why couldn't it have been a darker blue, maybe down at her shoulders, up into a lighter blue above? It's, it's kind of a very flat painting, and kind of, I have to say, a little bit cold, too. But, but that's... And it's be okay, better from far away, but but I, I don't know that I want to see more of this person's work. Now, the next one I struggled with because I really love how the hair is done. I, that's the kind of painting I really enjoy, using a lot of paint and using broad strokes and then throwing in an unusual color that will... Um, so rather than having the highlights of white in her hair, they use this sort of vibrant green. Now, it is not my preference to use a fluorescent green at all. You know, this is not something that I would put on my palette. I find it, I, I don't really like colors that don't, that don't appear in nature. And I don't think this color appears in nature. This is a manufactured plastic color for me. So, but that's, that's completely my, my choice here. Uh, the part where I don't think this painting is as successful is when it comes to the face. It's, it's a beautiful painting, don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful painting. I don't like how scratchy the background is. That could have been way more generous in terms of paint application. I actually think that would have changed my whole view of this painting. But it's quite flat. Um, I, I know there are more shapes in there than what this person discovered. But it's, it's a good job, but it leaves me wanting. And Part of that is the color choice decisions that they made and the application of paint. So let's see which one Angie Lee picks to take home. She's, she's got a tough pick on this one, but let's see. Oh, she picks this one. Okay, fine. Well, I'm glad it's going to be in her home and not mine. Now, the next part, next part of the program is where all the artists are lined up, and they're going to pick three of these people to be in the semifinals of this episode. Only one of these three will go on to the, fine, the uh, fine, semifinals of the program, which will be episode eight. There'll be eight painters all together when we finally get to the semifinals, and from those eight, they'll, be, they'll pick three. From those three, there'll be one winner. So here's the first one up, and you know I think this is the best painting that was done today. Beautifully done. This one... Weird, weird media choice, you know, in terms of its application and kind of mushy. And this one, lovely p little piece of drawing, but uh, I don't see it having the gravitas of what, what the final prize is going to be, which is a commission for a gallery. Now we get a chance to see their, the self-portrait they had all the time to do and what they did in four hours today. And there is a huge difference between these two. And that is worrisome to me because, and not only that, but... I, I, Okay, it's worrisome to me because I think she would have taken things further. I think she would have picked up that titanium white. Oh, that titanium white, which is working really hard in the painting on the left. And it makes the, it, it brings the whole painting on the left into the area of looking chalky and dusty. Titanium white is a wonderful tool, an absolutely wonderful tool. But 
using it carefully and judiciously because if you lean on it too hard, the effect is going to be this kind of chalky, neutralized, filmy thing that happens, and it's not happening on the painting to the right. And I think that's because she ran out of time, and that served her well in this case. Now the next one is the one that, you know, I, I don't like. <laughs> I mean, the reason I don't like it is because I think it's absolutely beautifully done, but it's just not suited for what we know the final prize, prize is going to be, which is a gallery commission of a famous celebrity for a national gallery. This isn't going to fly there. Is it a great piece of work? Sure, but that's but it's not the right venue for it. But this is the one that they chose, and um, and the person did do, I can't remember if I said this earlier or not, but they did several of these throughout the day. Yeah, I did mention that, but I, I oh boy, I think there's so much potential for this person to be a really great painter. And I understand they're a minimalist and this is what they do. And, and I do honor that. I just, I just don't know how you judge the, the differences here. I mean, and I'll, I'll talk about that, about that a little bit more in one second. But here, is, uh, here are the two paintings of our last semifinalist for today. And that is a beautiful job on the left. That is just fantastic. And not a big difference between what she was able to do in four hours and what she was able to do when she had unlimited time. She's got the skills. She's got the ability to get the job done. And um, if they don't pick her, they're, 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 uh, they're making a big mistake. <sighs> you already know they don't pick her. But anyway, here we go. So... Now those three semifinalists are going to get whittle, uh, whittled down to one final winner. Now we get one last chance to see all three of them together in the final judging. And I have to admit, it is. You're comparing chocolate cake to tuna salad to sushi. They're all wonderful in their own way, but how do you decide between these three? Well, they of course do make a decision, and the one they decide on is the very minimalist one, which I very much disagree, but I'm not a judge, and let's see if this kind of judging continues for the rest of this season. Last season, <laughs> they didn't do this to us as much, but they're starting out with episode one already kind of getting under my skin, but so be it. Remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.